Oke. Okay. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Hello everyone. My name is Rido and today we're going to talk about robots and AI. So, you've probably heard of the fear and warning surrounding the machine takeover that robots and AI are going to take our jobs in the future. But is that really true? Let's explore. So, based on a survey done BYQ, only 14% of workers have reported being replaced by some sort of machinery. And one said to overstate their facts by at least three times. So if the facts don't necessarily support the panic, where does it all even come from? Well, overblown headlines certainly play a contributing factor, but this fear and panic isn't really a new one. It's been here since automation was a thing at least 1800s, maybe even before that. When we hear a headline about a new piece of tech, we automatically assume it will be immediately implemented without consideration into the social, political, scientific implications of doing that. We even have past examples of this. Robot vacuums, sewing machines, even chat GPT now. Well, they do help in a lot of ways. That's all they really do, help. They augment our abilities, but we still need to step in ourselves to compensate for its limits. That's probably what robots and AI will end up being. An augment, a tool, something to help us. Or at least, that's what some researchers have said. Humans have the tendency to focus on the negative. There's even a word for it, negativity bias. So is that what's currently causing all this fear? Maybe. Tech is an ever-evolving beast. People from previous eras of time have probably experienced the same fear we're currently experiencing. There's even a good quote from the New York Times back in the 1950s that I think illustrates this point pretty well. The advent of the horseless carriage struck a mortal blow to the carriage industry, the harness manufacturers, and even the faithful horse itself. But it created thousands of new jobs creating, selling, and surfacing automobiles. But that's the present. What about the future? While in the past, automation was more so replacing strength and muscle, in the future, it could be replacing intelligence and the brain. That complicates how we can prepare for the future. But there have been some predictions, and you can either be bleak or optimistic, depending on what's going to happen to the workers. And for that, we have a past example, the Industrial Revolution. The Industrial Revolution undoubtedly increased how much you could produce, improve the nature of work, and help us in many other ways. But it took a period of time to feel those effects. And let's just say that period of time wasn't exactly pretty. For seven decades, wages were stagnant, food consumption decreased, and the living standard deteriorated. While the economy itself was doing pretty good, people didn't really get to see the benefit from that. And this, understandably, caused a lot of opposition. Riots, protests, fights, you name it, it probably happened. The urbanization from that era brought on challenges like pollution, adequate sanitation, miserable housing conditions, and even a lack of safe drinking water. Working conditions were so miserable that it gave rise to the trade union movement, and even, eventually, child labor laws. Yes, child labor laws because workers, who included children, were made to work in oftentimes tedious and sometimes even dangerous conditions for pitifully low wages. So yeah, while the living standard improved for the middle and upper classes, the poor and working class continued to struggle. And yeah, eventually there were solutions created to help those impacted by industrialization. But I still think it creates a pretty complicated portrait of the industrial revolution overall. On one hand, but on innovations and inventions that made clothing, transportation, and communication a lot more affordable and accessible. On the other hand, a lot of bad stuff happened in that era. And they still continue to happen to this day, like bad roofing conditions and pollution. So that begs the question, how do we make sure that the bad stuff that happened in the past won't happen to us again now or in the future? 
change and tech on its own aren't bad, it's what we do to utilize them that can be a problem. And the past has shown that a lot of these issues come up because of the prioritization of the economy, efficiency, and profits above all else. So then, wouldn't putting equal priority into the workers or the people somewhat alleviate this issue? I think, yes. Based on a 2017 report by McKinsey, with sufficient economic growth, innovation, and investment, there can be enough new job creation to offset the impacts of automation. The key word here for me being investment, and therefore, effort. The challenge is ensuring that the workers who are displaced get the help and resources they need to transition over to new jobs. That same report has a model that I think can be used to better illustrate this point. If displaced workers are able to find new jobs within a year, automation lifts up the economy. But if those same displaced workers take years to find new jobs, which of unemployment rises. So, in short, if we don't want the bad stuff that happened in the past to happen to us again now or in the future, we need to put in the effort and investment needed to make sure that this transitional period, let's call it that, goes as smoothly as possible. How do we do that? I have some ideas. Number one, help or aid. If there can be programs or resources that can make sure that changing your job or career goes as smoothly, accessibly, and affordably as possible, I think that can make the prospect of automation and therefore displacement a lot less scary in the long run. These programs could help or target the people most at risk of being displaced and help them navigate coming change. Maybe through access to educational resources or even retreatment. And if that doesn't float your boat, there's also regulation. Regulation, if done right, can both encourage growth automation, but also prohibit its negative uses, like social scoring, manipulation, or even, for a more trendy issue, copyright infringement. There's even active efforts in places like Europe to implement regulation. The only thing that's up for debate is how hard or soft these regulations should be enforced. With those solutions out of the way, I'd like to discuss one more thing. How do we make sure that the people in power care as much about the negative impacts of automation as they do the potential positives of it? I mean, there's data showing that while productivity and the economy is on the up and up, wages are still stagnant. Does something sound familiar? That's kind of the thing that happened during the Industrial Revolution. So are we already on the same path? Maybe. My prediction is, if we put in the effort and investment needed to make sure that this transitional period goes as smoothly as possible, the future looks hopeful. But if we don't do that, the future looks kind of bleak. But that's just a prediction. Before I end this presentation, I'd like to say thank you to all of you for being here. Goodbye, good afternoon, and farewell.